Hi, I'm Chad with Move For Guitar. This lesson is from our series, How to Read Music for Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to explain key signatures. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, How to Read Music for Guitar. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that'll allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part 15 from our series, How to Read Music for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So, so far we've covered a lot of important ingredients for reading music notation, but we're still missing a really important one, and that's key signatures. So I told you in a previous lesson that if you wanted to take a note and make it sharp or flat, you could put a sharp sign or a flat sign in front of it, and that would raise the pitch by one half step or lower the pitch by one half step. And those symbols are called accidentals, the sharp sign or the flat sign. So for example, with what's on your screen right now, if I wanted to take all the C's, the F's, and the G's and make them sharp, I could do something like this. So now I have sharp symbols in front of the C's there and there. This is an F right here. There's a sharp symbol. And then there's a G right here. I put a sharp symbol in front of that. And you're going to run across that a lot. But in a situation like with what's written on the screen, it would make more sense to use a key signature because all these notes fall within the key of A, which I'll talk more about keys in upcoming lessons and where they come from and the major scale and all of that. But just know that you can use a key signature to accomplish everything that's written on the screen and make it look much cleaner. So now I could write a key signature right here. This is called the key signature. And now I know that it's in the key of A and all the C's, F's, and G's are going to be sharp. And I wouldn't have to write the sharp symbol in front of those notes. And so key signatures are really important. For one, they tell you what key a piece of music is in, which is really important, which I'll talk more about coming up in these upcoming lessons. But also it just makes the music a lot cleaner. If you have a key where a bunch of notes are going to be either sharp or flat, if you're writing them in front of the notes, that gets really messy really quick. You can make it a lot easier to read just by using a key signature and it'll make it a lot cleaner. And again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about keys, we're going to dive into that in the upcoming lessons. But for now, I just want to talk about key signatures by themselves and explain what they're doing. So the key signature falls right between the clef sign and the time signature. So you can see it would be right here. And you're either going to have a grouping of sharps like I have right here, or it's going to be a grouping of flats. And you would never see a mixture. For example, if you had three sharps like that, you're not going to see a flat in there as well. It's either going to be all sharps or all flats or nothing. And if there's nothing, that means it's in the key of C or A minor, which I'll talk about in upcoming lessons what that means. Or it means that the piece doesn't fall very well within one key, so it's easier to use the sharps and flat symbols or what are called accidentals throughout the music instead of trying to fit it within a key to begin with. But in most situations, you're going to find some sort of key signature, or if there isn't one, it's usually meaning that it's in the key of C or A minor. And what this key signature is telling us, for example, this is showing three sharps. Anywhere the sharp lands, that means any note written, no matter what octave is going to be a sharp. For example, this first one is on this line, which a note on that line is an F. So an F lands on that line. That means all F's in this piece are going to be F sharps instead of F naturals. And that doesn't matter if it falls on this line or is in a different octave. For example, this is an F right here, which isn't falling on that line. It's an octave lower, but this is still an F sharp. So no matter what octave it's in, it's still going to apply to that note. This one right here is a C. That sharp is on the space where a C goes. So that means all C's in this piece, unless otherwise noted, are going to be C sharps no matter the octave. These two are C sharps, even though they're not in that space. These are in that space and they're C sharps as well. And then again, this is on a G, so that means all G's are G sharps unless otherwise notated. And there are rules about how the key signature is written, what lines and spaces are written on, which ones come first and all that. We're going to dive into that in a couple lessons coming up. But for now, just realize that when you see one of these, it's representing a key signature, which means this piece of music is in a specific key, which we'll talk about that coming up as well. But the most important thing to realize for right now is that wherever one of these symbols land, whether it's a sharp or a flat, 
whatever line or space it's in, whatever note is on that line or space is going to be a sharp or flat depending on what symbol is used. And that's for any of those notes on any of the lines or spaces, not just, for example, like I said, the Fs that fall here, but Fs in other spots as well. So that means if you were to see this right here, which this key signature is telling you that all the Fs are F sharps, which would mean that this note right here, which is an F, is actually an F sharp, not just an F natural. That would be the same thing as if it was written like this. So these two notes are the same. So this isn't showing a key signature, but it's using an accidental in front of this F, which makes it an F sharp. This is showing a key signature saying that all Fs in this piece, unless otherwise notated, are F sharps. So these two notes are the exact same note. So if they're on your fretboard, they would land right there. Or if we were to look at a flat key, this is saying that all of these notes written right here are flats. This is on the B line, so that means all Bs are flat. This is in the E space, so all Es are flat. This is in the A space, so all A's are flat. And this is on the D line, so all D's are flat. So this right here is an A, so that's an A flat. This is a B, so that's a B flat. This is an E, that's an E flat, even though this is showing the flat symbol on an E space up here, it still means that any E in this piece is a flat, unless otherwise notated. This is a D, so that's a D flat. So what's written right there with that key signature would be the same as having one without a key signature that wrote flats in front of all the notes. All these notes are the exact same as all of these notes, which would be right here on your fretboard. And again, we're gonna dive deeper into this. I'm gonna explain it in a lot more detail, so it'll make a lot more sense. But for now, it's just really important to understand that concept, what a key signature is, where it lands on your staff, and what the symbols mean as far as where they're landing in the staff and what it does to the notes in that piece. So that's an explanation of key signatures. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to dive deeper into key signatures by talking about the major scale and keys. And be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.